Welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello. Josh, my friend, we're still dealing with all sorts of things around the world, and now it appears bit. that the beloved E3 show is dead. It is, sadly. And you know what's even worse, Scott? Go on. You know how every single year for the past three years, when it comes to events like E3 yeah. or the Video Game Awards, we've always said, this is the time for WB to finally announce <laughs> what Rocksteady and WB for Montreal are working years. on. For years and years we've been saying that, yeah. and earlier this year we said, this E3 has to be the one where they finally show off uh, what they've been working on. Working on, and mm -hmm. if rumors are to be believed from Jason Schreier, who, when he was reporting on the um, E3 cancellation last night, yes. revealed a tidbit that WB as a whole were actually going to be e at E3 to do their first ever E3 conference to reveal the um, actual Warner Brothers, the actual Warner Brothers themselves. About time they were going to be there to Good. reveal the new Batman Arkham, Arkham game from WB Montreal, what Rocksteady were working on, and the Harry Potter RPG. These <sighs> these rumors were actually from earlier in the week as well. Uh, we actually did a news with. Rich uh, and um, I think it was I believe it was Ash I'm sure it was Rich and Ash yes. who talked through um, that you know the Harry Potter game was having an imminent um, announcement mm -hmm. and it just like it sucks, man. Like, I didn't want to comment on this yesterday because there were rumors that E3 was going to be cancelled. Yep. I didn't want to do a video on this and then have it, you know, nullified a day later. But mm -hmm. with everything out on the table now, there was going to be an E3 conference to reveal all these juicy games that we've been waiting for and now mm. there's not going to be one and they haven't announced whether or not they're going to do a replacement thing. I think because the, the, the solution to all this that's been talked about at the minute is that Microsoft are going to do an online streamy type thing. The ESA, who are the governing body of E3, are looking into doing some sort of online version of E3. So I have to assume that it just... It doesn't make any financial sense to not nail these beats in, in part of your marketing rollout. If this is the, you know, they plan these things months, years in advance. Like this is when we're going to tell the world about this thing, and we'll, you know, we're going to have pre-orders here, and it's going to go gold here, and this is, you know, whatever. People are going to be able to buy it at the end over here. So it doesn't really make sense to, or it's nigh on impossible to miss out on yeah. such a fundamental part of that rollout. So I have to assume that either, you know, they do their own live stream. I mean, Warner Brothers are a big enough name. Um, you know, if they put out, by the way, <laughs> Warner Brothers games are finally ready, and then I'll follow microtransactions and random storefronts yeah. and that would be a cool thing to go forward with. It's just one of those things like we've known these games have been coming for years mm. now and it's always been a matter of you know when rather than if. It's just so mm. funny that it keeps getting pushed back. You know what I mean? The <laughs> one time we were actually going to get confirmation now we don't know oh. when it's going to happen but yeah obviously it's not like the games are being cancelled they're still going to be no. coming. The development period hasn't changed so they're still going to be on track for whatever dates they were going to hit. Mm -hmm. It's just when are we going to see them now? Like I you said you they could do their own event like a lot of other um studios are going to be doing which we're going to have some more news on but it just depends whether it's going to be you know and is it still going to be june is it mm -hmm. going to be earlier is it going to be later we have no I'll idea i'll tell you where my my mind goes to is uh, if you believe the the rumors about this game it was a uh, or it, it, i don't know if you want to go wild banana sandwich left right and center shark sandwich if you want to go ridiculous we've coded it in the past before um that one of the ideas for this new batman game was something where batman was using joker toxin to infect other people and then that would be the way that he builds an army and it's kind of like shadow of mordor or war um you know and you go forward like that. I wonder if the effects of the worldwide thing has any sort of bearing on the actual content of games themselves. It could do, actually. That's an interesting mm -hmm. thing that we're going to see going forward because, you know, there have been uh, spikes in movies about, you know, contagions and stuff like that. But I wonder whether the actual Good content movie, of games, like you said, will change. And if that was the plan, that might be altered. I have mm -hmm. no idea. What's interesting to me is that Rocksteady's game was going to be there because I we still have no idea what that thing is going to be. There have been rumors <laughs> a long time ago that it was a Superman game, that it was a Justice League game. Mm -hmm. Then there was a rumor that it was going to be a custom superhero game where you created your own superhero <laughs> in the DC universe. Okay. We have no idea what they're doing. They keep, you know, announcing that they're looking for people, they're hiring people to work on the project. Mm -hmm. It's been, what, f almost five, five years, years since 20... Arkham Knight? Yeah. We know nothing. So that's that's the exciting one for me because yes. we've, we've seen the leaked trailer of, for the Harry Potter RPG. WB Montreal have been teasing their Court of Owls game, let's call mm -hmm. it for lack of a better term, for a few months now. It is, but it's Rocksteady who haven't said anything official, haven't teased any, anything official, mm -hmm. that to me is, you know, Do you think at this point that it's, pumping. it's still going to be a superhero themed thing? Because that was the assumption that they yeah. would do Superman, they would, they would do for Superman what they did for Batman. And there was, uh, I don't know, it's time to blur at this point. We've had five years of rumors, but at one point there was a big old leaked, um, you know, dossier thing about the way that the Superman game would play. And it had this whole new aerial combat system, uh, and you know, and you would be fighting people kind of like how uh, Superman fights Zod at the end of Man of Steel. This big kinetic sensibility, um, and I like the the sound of that. But then they moved away from that, and they said it's yeah. not Superman. So I kind of wonder if it's going to be superhero themed. Is it still DC? Like, do you think they go in that realm, or do they do do, do something completely different? Because of who WB Games is as a mm. publisher, 
I can't see them, and this sounds bad, but I can't see them letting Rocksteady do something that isn't superhero based. Yeah. There is so much money to be made there, and I think, you know, mm. it makes sense for them to not force them to do another Batman game, but I do think it will be superhero based because that, you know, mm. the, the world of the DC universe is still has so much untapped potential. Oh, like, yeah. we've talked about it, me and you have talked about it, me and you have talked about it, about how, you know, the, the stage was set for an interconnected DC universe, mm. games universe, mm -hmm. and that was never really capitalized on it, but yeah. with these announcements, Announcements with WB's game, WB Montreal's game being announced alongside Rocksteady. Mm -hmm. For me, I do think it makes sense for them to both be superhero games and maybe even take place in a similar uh, universe. Do you think that would be the way that they, if the Call of Owls game is true, if all those rumors are true, obviously that's the continuation of the Batman mythos. Although, again, if that stuff is true, it's a prequel, but yeah. either way, you can do something more with, with Batman on stage. Oh my god, the return of Batman. And then whatever Rocksteady are doing, do you think that would be the case that they would roll them both out? Warner Brothers get to have that where the superhero publisher, here's our connected universe, here's Batman, he is insert X character. I think so, because be this cool. actually links in with the, the next rumour that I've mm -hmm. got, because it's not just these three games that Jason Schreier was teasing. Yes. These games were going to be amongst other titles that are unannounced, so I was kind of having a little research to think about what could be viable. Now, and one game that was mentioned, sorry, go No, on. no, I did, I did see that you you might have convinced yourself there's a Matrix game coming. We'll get to that. Okay. First off, I need to talk, keep on the superhero <laughs> track, I need to talk about Wonder Woman. Because, oh, I was going to say Wonder Woman before we were yeah. about a DC character, because she would fit so well with a melee phone focus system and you've got the whips and you've got all the shields and you've got the kick and, the, and you jump and you knock the person out the window. She's the only really person good. who can ever do that, <laughs> by the way. She's nailed knocking people out of windows. Exactly. But yeah, back in 2018, there were rumours that a uh, Wonder Woman game was in development at WB Games. Mm. And I was looking online and WB Games has so many um, studios that one was formed last year that we have no idea what they're doing. So theoretically, <laughs> one of these could be a Wonder Woman game. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, then they could do the thing of, look, we've got three superhero titles that are in production, we're just going to take over the superhero landscape because, you know, Marvel are trying to do it. They've got the Avengers off the ground. They've got yep. Spider-Man already, already released. Mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy is, is in development somewhere. They have inking deals all the time. So WB need to mount a response and they've already laid the groundwork. So this could be the case. For as much as, uh, like you said, all those projects are in the works, there's something about, um, Spider-Man was obviously a, a phenomenal game, but I don't feel like it landed in the same way that something like God of War did. Like, I don't feel like it gets Ooh. talked about as much in that respect. But my overall point is that looking forward, I don't feel like the Avengers has anything close to the same level of hype as Rocksteady's next game or even the next Batman game. I'll, I'll give you that, but yeah. through name brand alone, I think the Avengers will sell a lot. No, no, it will. I, yeah. just, I mean, in terms of like, I don't know. It feels like if you were if you were WP, that's a nice pivot to go into because they did yeah. get they get, did get raked over the coals for Shadow of War and and they eventually took all the microtransactions out of that. Um, but you know, they had uh, microtransaction <laughs> fatalities in Mortal Kombat. Um, it would be a nice thing for them to pivot back into and go. You know, we've got all these beloved properties. How about we actually do this stuff right? Well, yeah. Yes. And then, you know, you have other yeah. IPs as well. Because the other, the one I think that is nailed on is mm. Injustice 3, because just judging on Netherrealm's, you know, schedule, they do a Mortal Kombat, they mm. do an Injustice, and there's yes. always two years between them. The last Injustice game came out three years ago, so it would make sense if that was announced this year for release next year. I think that's Ooh. absolutely nailed on. Yeah. yeah, I do think we'll also see another Middle Earth game, because it's been quite oh, a while yeah. since the last one. And even though, uh, I, always, I always get them mixed up, it was Shadow of War last time, wasn't it? Yeah, Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor. One. Yeah. That was the first one. You would like some Shadow of Mordor War. What was the second one called? Shadow of War. Interesting. Shadow That's of Mordor. Such a and then Shadow of War. Thing. But then it ditched the Lord of the Rings thing, because it was Middle Earth colon Shadow of Mordor, and then it was just Shadow of War. Brilliant. I think. Either way, Either that way. second one, you know, obviously, like you just said, yeah. it sort of soured people a lot on the franchise, but still I still think game. there's still, yeah, it's still a good game. And there's still a solid foundation there, and I still think there's a lot of goodwill to mm. see it succeed. Mm -hmm. So it it's kind of a no-brainer that we will see a third one kind of atoning for the mistakes of the misstep that the second one. Came. Yeah, they are, they are they involved in Lord of the Rings Gollum as well? Uh, no, that's a different studio. And it's a different dev. I wasn't sure if Warner Brothers was still like, you know, we kind of have access to Lord of the Rings, right. even though they kind of don't. The, the, the Tolkien estate is so confusing, <laughs> and I have no idea who owns all the individual rights. I assume okay. they're going to be involved somehow, but at the same time, that Gollum, the Gollum in the Gollum game, isn't based on Gollum from the WB movies, so they might not be involved. It's, it's, not, it's not part Gollum? of this thing. He's a different Gollum. Okay. He's, he's Gollum based on the Gollum in the books. <laughs> Gollum Prime. I'm talking myself into a brick wall here, I'm but yes. Fan. Then we get to the, the mad left field choice that I have, because <laughs> I was thinking about what games they could be working on uh, and what properties WBO or yeah. and what they could do justice. Mm -hmm. And Scott Telford, it makes sense to me 
that they might be doing. Bugs and Taz Time Busters 2. The Matrix game. Oh, with the cuts in the face. I think that if, I mean, at this stage, I would take the new tunes over the Matrix. Would you really? I, well, personally, You I would, and said this as well. Well, I just think I, I have too many beloved memories with the, with the new tunes games, whether it's Looney Tunes Racing, whether it's Bugs and Taz, whether it's that weird Taz, Taz Wanted. That was the, good. The, the, that was really the good. The one. Yep. Um, like in the Bugs Bunny solo game. I just, there was a whole run of them across the 2000s. Maybe I'm thinking back to the late 90s, but there was a ton of Looney Tunes games back then, and they were all done, <laughs> in retrospect, in my mind's eye, fairly well. I think some of them were clunky as, you know, F. Yeah, but, but we all have, whatever. like, fun memories of them, and they were all, like, again, in the mind's eye with rose tinted mm. glasses on, all very good. Speaking of ro uh, rose tinted glasses and good memories, though, Enter the Matrix, I absolutely adore that. Right, well, this is it. Let me try to convince you that a Matrix game is happening, yes. right? WB, it's one of their most popular franchises that they own. It fits so well in video game form, as yep. we've seen before in Enter the Matrix and Path of Neil, <laughs> which was also very good. I like and it. Scott Tilford, lest we forget, there's a new movie coming next there year. There is, there is. I mean, they even did the John Wick game, uh, like, obviously, it's John with Hex, it's only this like turn-based type thing, but they broached that idea of a Keanu Reeves fronted martial arts focused flick, you know, in game form, which yeah. we haven't seen, like you said, since Path of, well, since Matrix Online. Exa well, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like I mean, all I'm saying is if you taught me back in, you know, 2012, 2013, mm. that they were going to make a Middle Earth Lord of the Rings game, I would have said, ha ha, Scott Telford, <laughs> you are talking out your butthole. But He's then they did it and they did it really stage, well. Anyway. I do. Mm. So maybe they can do the same thing that they did for that game. The Matrix. Possibly. I think at this point, people can just let us know what you think down in the comments below of the nascent Warner Brothers franchises that are due a revival, because maybe there's something really obvious that we're not maybe. thinking of, but we're going to throw our twin hats in the ring for a Matrix game. And um, yes, let us know what you think down in the comments below. For now, Evan Scott from Aculture.com. I've been Josh from Aculture.com. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. So sorry for hitting you in the face with the baby. It's all right, I just got a little cut. I'm so it, sorry. It's all right. It went, it was supposed to go that way. Lead for the content. And it turned around. Lead for the content. <laughs> and it hit you in the face. <laughs> it was like, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Give us a f***ing <laughs> doom, God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>